This happened about four years ago, in December of 2015. Me and five of my friends have our own business editing photos and videos for social media content creators. And because of this, we tend to have a lot of spare time on our hands. We used to go on road trips to a local lake that has a few nice spots to camp at and a ski resort. We usually went there on our days off. One week, the six of us finished all of our projects early, so we had a few days off. We decided to drive to the lake. I won't be using their real names for obvious reasons, so I'll call them Kevin, Stephen, Brittany, Katie, and Josh. Katie and Brittany rode in Katie's old sports car, and Stephen and I rode on our motorcycles. Usually, Kevin and Josh took Stephen's Jeep. But on this trip, Josh had just bought a new Sprinter van, which the previous owner had converted into a two-person camper. So Kevin decided to ride with Josh. When we arrived, we skied, had some really delicious camping food, and listened to Josh brag about his new van. It was a pretty normal trip. On the last day, we all packed up to head home. About two hours into the trip back home, we were a little hungry, so we stopped at a gas station to grab some snacks. We all parked our vehicles outside and went into the gas station together, which was kind of foolish. We were in there maybe four or five minutes, and the car's door was left open the whole time. When we came outside, we had a huge shock waiting for us. Josh's van was gone. There was a huge dent on the side of Katie's car and another dent on the side of an old truck in the parking lot, which I assume belonged to an employee. We were so panicked at that moment, so we immediately called the police. But since we were a little off the grid, the police took 15 minutes to arrive, and by then, we knew the chances of them being able to find Josh's van was slim to none. The scariest thing about it was that Kevin brought his work laptop on the trip, and I knew that Kevin didn't have a password set up on it. We waited for another two or so hours while the police searched the area, but they couldn't find anything. They told us to go home, and they would contact us if they found the stolen van. Kevin and Josh rode with the girls in Katie's car, while Stephen and I rode our motorcycles, following them very closely. We didn't stop once during the remaining three-hour trip home. Fast forward two or three weeks later, we received a frantic call from Josh. He said that the police contacted him and that the van had been found. All six of us showed up to see the van, and the van had somehow been rolled on its side and was left in a ditch near the highway, about an hour from where it had been stolen. Once they got it out of the ditch and flipped it upright, the police let us look inside to see if we could salvage any personal items. Sure enough, Kevin's laptop was gone, along with a set of kitchen knives that Josh had used for making kebabs. The most disturbing thing, though, was that once we got the busted driver's side door open, we saw that both seats were stained a deep dark red in multiple places, and the dashboard had slash marks all over it. At that point, we were really afraid of the van. Josh let the police take the van for further inspection, but we never heard what happened to it, or who the blood belonged to.